move on to the abdomen now. So if you could just uh, lean back for me. So for the abdomen, I'm going to take care to auscultate first so that I don't uh, enrage the bowel or so that I don't uh, bring about any more bowel sounds. So I'm going to start listening in the lower right quadrant and I'm just trying to determine if there's bowel sounds present. Um, it'll only be a notable observation if it's hyperactive, hypoactive, or if they're absent altogether. And um, so I'm hearing normal gurgling bowel sounds, not hyper or hypoactive. If I wasn't able to hear any, then I would go ahead and listen for up to five minutes per quadrant. Um, additionally, before auscultating, I should have inspected first just um, looking at the abdomen. I can't really see because he's wearing a shirt, but looking at the abdomen for uh, the skin, uh, assessing the color, presence of any lesions, uh, and the location of the umbilicus. And now I'm going to go through and palpate uh, gently and let me know if you feel any tenderness. Anything? Okay, so the patient isn't experiencing any tenderness or pain in that area and I didn't feel any uh, bumps or masses. Now I'm going to go through and percuss and I should hear a uh, timpani sound throughout, which I do, and if I heard a dull sound, then it might indicate that there's a mass or that um, some organ, like the liver, is enlarged. And uh, right now I'm just going to run down and explain the locations of the internal organs in the uh, four quadrants. So in the lower right quadrant, we have the uh, small intestines, the appendix, uh, the cecum, the ascending colon, and the uh, right ureter and right spermatic cord, and a small part of the bladder. The right upper quadrant has some small intestines, the ascending and transverse colon, uh, the right kidney, the right adrenal glands, the head of the pancreas, the liver, and the gallbladder. The uh, upper left quadrant has a small part of the liver, the tail of the pancreas, the left kidney and adrenal glands. Um, oh, I neglected to say the duodenum is in the uh, upper left, but also in the upper right is the spleen and uh, transverse and descending colon and a small amount of small intestines. And the lower left quadrant has the uh, descending and sigmoid colon, it has uh, small intestines, um, the left spermatic cord, left ureter, and a uh, small part of the bladder. So uh, that's it for assessing the abdomen. I'm going to ask you to sit up. And I'm also going to just uh, percuss the costovertebral angle on the back here checking for kidney tenderness. you feel any pain when I do this? No. Okay, he didn't jump up to the chandelier, so I think it's, there's no pain in the kidneys. And so now I'm going to move on to the peripheral vascular system. I'm going to inspect and then uh, inspect his arms, hands, legs, and feet for color, symmetry, uh, dist hair distribution, <coughs> and any bumps, lesions, or masses. Um, from what I can see, the color and hair distribution is uniform throughout, um, and there are no bumps, lesions, and masses. I'm just going to palpate a little bit, feeling for any of those. Okay. All right, and now I'm going to... Um, just check his pulses. I'm going to start with the uh, radial pulse here. Yeah, it's uh, even, steady, and full uh, bilaterally. I'm going to check the brachial pulse here. A little harder to feel, but it's present. I'm going to check the, uh, in the posterior tibial pulse, which is uh, right behind the malleolus. Okay, 
that's even and full bilaterally. Okay. And then I would check his uh, dorsus, uh, dorsus pedalis pulse, which is just behind the tendon and the big toe, um, a little less than halfway up the foot here. Okay. Uh, I'm also going to check the capillary refill on his toes while I'm down here, just giving them a squeeze, and then the uh, when they become pink after less than two seconds, that indicates a normal uh, a normal finding. Okay, peripheral vascular. I think that's it. I'm going to move on now to musculoskeletal. I'm going to assess the strength in the upper and lower extremities. So could you just grab and squeeze my fingers? Okay, great. And now put your arms out and lift against uh, mine. Okay. And now could you lift your legs against my arms? All right. And lift your feet. Okay. So full strength uh, in the upper and lower extremities and it's symmetrical. Uh, so that is a normal finding. And I'm going to uh, assess one of his joints. I'm going to do his left knee. Uh, I just uh, look at it and observe the size and contour, looking for any swelling. I'm going to palpate it, feeling for any swelling, any fluid in the joint, any, uh, any warmth. And I'm just going to ask you to uh, bend your leg up, feeling for crepitus. Okay, there's a very, very mild crepitus there, um, but that's within the normal range. And musculoskeletal. Let's see. There's another thing I'm forgetting. I'm gonna um, observe your gait. Could you just stand up and just walk to the uh, end of the room and back here? Yeah, just walk over. Okay. So his gait is even and. Uh, even and normal, you can sit back down. There's no limping, uh, no, um, his arms are moving normally with his gait, um, no strange affectations, so that's a, um, that's a normal finding for the gait. And now I'm going to move on to the neuro, and, neuro assessment and uh, the mental assessment. So, uh, in the course of doing the whole uh, the whole assessment, he has been speaking normally. Um, he has been uh, he's been alert, attentive, and has responded appropriately to all stimuli. His let me ask you, how are you feeling today? I'm good. Okay. And did you hear that the Tigers won last night? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. It's so yeah. So. His mood seems to match his affect. He said he was feeling good. He's looking pretty calm and relaxed and, uh, you know, happy. And his face lit up when I asked about the tigers. So he's uh, responding. His facial expressions are appropriate for the uh, situation. And he has been, he's been sitting upright the entire time with appropriate posture. His position sitting on here has been, uh, Appropriate. He hasn't been on the floor or hiding or doubled over in pain. Um, <clears throat> he's he has been uh, attentive to the entire the entire assessments. Uh, displayed a positive attitude, uh, and yeah. Is there any? Anything? Let's see. Oh, the one thing we have to do is the Romberg test to assess your balance. I just watched him uh, walk, but if he has a neuro disorder, it's possible that he might fall and he might be off balance. So I'm going to just ask you to close your eyes for about 10 seconds. Okay. Very, very minimal swaying. Yeah, he's able to keep his balance with his eyes closed. So that's, uh, you can open your eyes and sit back down. So that's a normal finding for the Romberg test. I think that concludes our assessment today. Do you have any questions for me? What a swing? Very, very minimal swing. Okay, I'm going to wash my hands again here, and I'm going to walk out the door. Thanks for being a great patient. Oh, thanks.